grand opening, grand closing. <laughs> we got some tea today. Hey, yo, Porter Rock 77, your only friend, these YouTube streets. And thank you for checking out this video. We got some tea today. Um, the data keeps pouring. The data keeps pouring from the Insomniac leaks, but I guarantee no one's going to cover this. That, that's it. People are done. They're moving on. They don't want data, but I'm going to give it to you, you know, because this is some facts. This is some good information on the overall landscape of the PlayStation 5. So as you can see here, and I'll, so you can see the whole screen. This is facts. This is coming from the leaks. The same leaks everybody's using for everything else. This is the same source. PlayStation 5 players spend much more time playing single-player games than multiplayer ones, leaked documents suggest. All right, let me level set this. Let me level set this. You know, because you, my subscribers, you guys are good. You guys are good. You know, if you're new to the channel, I don't know you guys yet. But if you are here, hey, welcome. I hope you stick around. Hit the like button. Subscribe. But these are for the people that I know are not right in the head. These are for the people where the only reason you got a high school diploma is because you fell in on that no child left behind act. They just kept moving you along because they didn't want to deal with your dumb ass. What I'm about to explain is for you guys. I guarantee the majority of you understand what that means. Okay. What this article is about to talk about is on the PlayStation 5. And they also mentioned PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 combined. But on the platform, the amount of hours total of all games played everything if it's a game on playstation 5 and people boot it up installed and play it whether they bought it or they got it for free whatever all the hours collected they split the hours by games that are multiplayer centric and games that are single player centric and when the hours are split the bulk of the hours geared towards or lead towards the single player that's what this article is saying out of all the gameplay hours on PlayStation, PS5, the majority of hours are spent playing single player type game. Could be any type single player games. So do not come in the comments section with some stupid shit. But, but Call of Duty is the most played game or Fortnite is the most played game. They're not talking about the individual game. They're talking about the individual genre if you want to split single player and multiplayer as two separate genres. Right? That's the best way to categorize it. So the single player genre has more hours than the multiplayer genre. That is what this is about. I cannot explain this any easier. Okay. If, if this has to be broken down any simpler, then chances are you don't know how to tie your own shoe yet. And, and, and that's just it. You have, you're incapable of tying your own shoe. Your mom still ties your shoe for you at this point. Okay? Now, let's read it through. Alleged leaked documents indicate that the PS5 user base has consistently put much more time into playing single-player titles. Insomniac Games' data breach last month was a devastating one, with over 1.3 million internal files being stolen and shared on the internet by ransomware hackers. The leaks reveal details on multiple games that the studio has planned for the next several years. And at the same time, internal data and metrics for all of PlayStation at large that hadn't been made publicly available were also shared. The data is continuing to filter through even now, and those going through it have found engagement numbers that show how single player and multiplayer games have performed on the PS5 in the three years since it released. As shared by Twitter user FunkyCan, Funky Clam via Xpooter, an internal Sony business update presentation from February 2023 showcases that PS5 users have spent far more time playing single player games than multiplayer. On partic one particular slide breaks down the total gameplay hours by the collective PS5 user base, month by month. And as per that slide, every month since the console launch, its user's base has spent the majority of its time playing single player games, generally accounting for more than 50% of the playtime for the month and often much more than that. Like in December 2022, when out of the total of 1.6 billion gameplay hours, 
59% were spent in single player games, 20% in free to play multiplayer titles and 21% in multiplayer titles for which a PlayStation Plus subscription is required. Now again, my subscribers, people who rock with me, even you new dudes, you probably put the math two and two together. But you simpletons, I'm going to help you. 20% plus 21% is 41%. 59% is bigger than 41% multiplayer. I combine the free to play and the paid multiplayer together. 41%. So 59% of the gameplay hours for that specific example was single player. 41% was multiplayer. Again, this is overarching total um, gameplay hours across everything. Another slide does a similar breakdown, but combines the user basis of both the PS5 and the PS4. And the results are still similar, with single player engagement consistently tracking higher than multiplayer engagement in every single month from January 2019 to February 2023 so even when you combine the playstation 4 fan base now to get the total holistic playstation ecosystem of multiplayer on the console single player has put in more hours than multiplayer since january of 2019 and it has never lost every single month for what four years single player has trumped multiplayer. Now you can argue a specific multiplayer trumps a specific single player. Like Call of Duty has more hours than Spider-Man. Call of Duty has more hours than God of War. Yo, you could even say Call of Duty has more hours than Spider-Man and God of War. Sure. But when you combine every single player game that's out there, and you combine every single multiplayer game that's out there, and you total all the hours multiplayer trumps i mean single player trumps and i'm going to explain why i'm going to explain to you why but let's keep going nailing a successful live service model that has the legs to sustain itself for a prolonged period of time isn't something that many developers and publishers have managed to do of course in fact the majority of them have failed but multiplayer games by their very nature tend to be played by large numbers of people and for a significant amount of time. To see single player games consistently proving more popular among the PlayStation user base might come as a surprise to some. Then, but then again, it's a user base that has traditionally proven to be a strong audience for single player experience. Now, it's not a surprise to me overall. I just didn't say it, couldn't prove it, right? I'm going to show you a tweet that I said right here. And let me zoom it. All right. Oh, uh, no, this ain't it. This is my tweet right here. Here we go. And let me zoom it in so that way, hopefully. Come on, scrub. Let's go. Let's get up here. What's wrong with you, Windows? You want crack? I want you guys to see. All right. When Sony released that map, when Sony released that map, of the like the most played games in the world and they had this map interactive map it showed pretty much when you click on the regional world it was call of duty fortnite gta long it was among those games right and people use that as console war ammunition of course saying oh nobody plays single player games you can clearly see that it's all about the call of duty and what i did i tried to explain people that a single player game on its own will never have more hours than a multiplayer game, right? So I use this as a, as a lesson. I wrote, you can buy and beat, let's say 10 PlayStation exclusives. And let's say each average is out to 15 hours to beat for a total of 150 hours of game time. Now, okay, once again, I'm gonna explain. Everybody else is cool, but for you simpletons, 10 games times 15 hours equals 150 hours i'm gonna give we're gonna pause hey everybody everybody just pause because you know some of these fanboys they got bot rot it's a disease so it's gonna take them a little bit if you still don't understand 
go down your calculator, type in 10 times 15, and you're going to get a number. That number is going to be 150. That's how many total hours across all 10 games. All right, good. So now let's continue. You buy Madden once, just one Madden, and you play that game for a total of 300 hours across the year. Damn. You don't play PS exclusives because you have more hours than Madden. And that's pretty much the energy. You can beat 10 PlayStation exclusives and buy one multiplayer game. Well, that one multiplayer game, you're going to keep going back to it, back to it, back to it, and back to it. For example, use Madden. And the reason why I use Madden, for my example, is because why I play, I used to play Madden a lot. In fact, the years I played Madden, almost half my hours of, ma of, of game time was Madden. The other hours were single player, right? Well, it wasn't even half. It was like 40%, right? But it was a huge chunk. Madden by itself, I put in more hours than any first PlayStation first party game than any game, period. Because that game I kept playing throughout the year over and over and over and over and over because it was fun playing online. But that didn't stop me from playing the PlayStation first party games and beating them. A new game come out, beat it. A new game come out, beat it. A new game come out, beat it. But those games are in perpetual. They have a shelf life. The hours is going to stop. Then you move on to the next game. So when you compare Madden to, let's say, one game, Madden's always going to win in hours individually, right? But when you do the culmination of just wanting to play the game, you can see that people want to play first party games. In this case, playing 10 place exclusive games apparently don't matter because they don't equal the hours of whatever I did on Madden, which I said this was a stupid logic, right? But now come to find out here that in total, the total hours of all single player games is outclassing all the multiplayer games. And everybody's thinking, how is that possible? How is that surprising? Especially when you have Call of Duty, Destiny, you know, games like that are on the top um, um, most played games. Here is why, and I'm going to explain to you, right? And I'm going to explain to you. So bear with me. Stay with me, all right? Okay. The thing about successful multiplayer is the fact that there is not a lot of them. You don't have a whole slate of 50, 60 multiplayer games that everybody's playing. It is a condensed chosen few and those few, everybody is locked in. Okay. When you look at the successful multiplayer games that everybody keeps talking about, it's the same game that came out years ago. It's the Fortnite, Call of Duty, Destiny, Grand Theft Auto Online, Rainbow Six Siege, Warframe, maybe Battlefield, hell on PC, CS2 Go. It's all these games that created a, a foundation where people don't leave, right? So these individual games collect immense amount of hours while the majority of the multiplayer games that are out there they fizzle and die they hardly get the hours they're just not there single player games though while that individual game doesn't collect the mass hours but what it does is it has an end and because it has an end people will put in they'll play it some will be to some don't and then they'll move on to the next single play game and they'll move on to the next single play game and on and on and on and on and on and on and they'll just keep playing and keep playing keep playing play and beat play and beat play and beat play and beat right and some people do put in a little bit of extra hours in single play games because of trophies some people really max out the single play game to get all the trophies and once they do they go on to the next one and it just keeps bombarding and keep going you got to keep feeding the beast right this is why multiplayer games have a hard time succeeding. I'm going to give you an analogy, all right? The successful multi... We're going to call the gamer, the consumer, right? The multiplayer gamer. We're going to call the multiplayer gamer. See, the gamers is kind of like husbands that cheat on their wives versus husbands that go to a strip club. Those are the two things. The single player games are the people that go to the strip club. The multiplayer gamers... That begging for new stuff, you the guys that want to cheat on your wife. I'm going to explain the analogy. You people are like, yo, Porter Rock Wallen, well, it's Sunday, it's time to entertain. The multiplayer games that are set in stone, Call of Duty, Fortnite, 
Grand Theft Auto Online. All those games that's already established, that's wifey. That's the wife. She has the house. She gave birth to your kids. You invested thousands of dollars in all your time because you dated her. You wooed her. Then you engaged. Then you married. And all your resources, everything about your life, you gave her your last name. All of it. You put mad time into her. That's where all your time went. That new multiplayer gas game that comes out, that's Susie Floozy. That's Becky with the good hair. That's that new chick. And you're like, ooh, you know? Now you, you know, you, you take off your wedding ring. You're in a little club. You hit her up. You tell her your sob story. Oh, wife not making me happy, blah, 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 blah. And Susie Floozy, Becky with the good hair, she giving you a good time. You're like, ooh, this is some new shit. Ooh, this is some new good good. Ooh, I haven't got that in a while. And you enjoy it for a little bit. Then comes the pivotal moment. Susie Floozy, Becky with the good hair, she wants you to commit. Because that's the only way she's going to be able to maintain her apartment, her livelihood. She needs you to commit. And now you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, Sus. I'm going back to wifey. All my financials, all my dedication, everything I know I am and what I be is there. So our time is done. We had a good time. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. But I'm going back to wifey. You end up going back to Call of Duty. You end up going back to Fortnite. You end up going back to all these stuff. So what does Susie Floozy Becky with the good hair do? She was designed to be supported by you. But you went back to wifey. So now Susie Floozy Becky with the good hair is out in the streets. No more red bottoms. No more Issey Laurent. The perfumes, all that stuff, gone. Fashion Nova, mm -mm. yo ass is out in the streets. That's the life of the multiplayer. Because that's the, the, that's the challenge anybody has to go through in order to have a successful multiplayer. You are trying to take away a husband that already has a wife. Because they're already locked in. They already spent thousands of dollars in expansion packs, in, in skins, and in all this stuff. Their peoples, their crew, their clans, all of that stuff has already been established for years onto these platforms. And now you're trying to take them away so they could play on your stuff. So people creating multiplayers, they're creating Becky with the good hair in hopes she's good enough to pull the husband away from a wife that already got established financially for years. That's the world of multiplayer in an analogy. It's a word. It's a, it's a bunch of Becky with the good hair. It's a bunch of Susie floozies going out there, graduating from college, looking fine and all that stuff. And they're trying to take husbands away. And most of them are failing because there's too much money invested in the household to get away from that. It's cheaper to keep them. While the single player side, we just chill in the strip club. We get something new every week. Hell, we don't even go to the same strip club. We just gonna go in, spend a few dollars, make that ass clap, and gone. Both sides get what they want. The people get their entertainment. They get to see, you know, the twerk contest, get to pour that liquor, on the booty, she gets her dollar bills. At the end of the night, everybody's gone. The stripper makes their money. The Johns get the entertainment. Everybody's happy. And we do this again next week. New girls, new arena, new stuff. That's single player games. Single player games are strippers. You don't get the same one. Or you might get the same one. Doesn't matter. Everybody gets. Everybody's happy. No commitment necessary. You play it. You enjoy it. Boom, go to the next one. You play it, you enjoy it. Boom, go to the next one. The beautiful part is you can go get to Nook's one and then you can go back to your wife. So even if you're a Call of Duty gamer, you could put that on pause, go play your single player game like Spider-Man, then go back to your wifey, Call of Duty. And guess what? Spider-Man's successful because you did what Spider-Man needs you to do, which was just give that dollar bill on stage. That's not the same as Becky with the good hair who can't survive off down on stage. She was made for you to consistently support her perpetually. 
Spider-Man ain't going to be supported perpetually. Spider-Man's a stripper. You're not... Strippers aren't designed to be supported perpetually. You show up to the show. You stay there for a couple of hours. Throw your dollars. Give your tips. You know? You want some little extra, extra stuff in the back? Pay me right now. That's it. Boom. It's over. They made their money. Becky with the good hair, Susie Floozy. No. She needs you to stick around. That's where the money comes from. But you're not sticking around. You went back to wifey. Spider-Man doesn't have a problem with that. God of War doesn't have a problem with that. Single-player games have a problem with that. Go back to Call of Duty. We will see you again when we come back with the sequel. The sequel's out. Hey, come to the club. Pop them bottles. Make that ass clap. Make that ass clap. End of the night, go back home. Everybody made money. Everybody's happy. Entertain money all over. That's what's happening. So, this thing... There's a lot of single players. Even the ones that aren't that successful, all you have to do is just buy it one time. But these multiplayer games, it's not enough to buy it one time. You can't just simply buy the game. No, they need consistent revenue all the time. They need you to commit. But the problem is you're already committed. You already got your home. You got the deed. You got the kids. Wifey got all your money. Sorry, Susie. Gotta go. Our time is done. You know? While the stripper like Cardi B, make that dollar for the night. And we move on and we good. And that's the scenario with multiplayer games. You understand? That's 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 the challenge, right? Back then, last gen and the previous gen, it wasn't like that. Right? The success of a multiplayer game, believe it or not, was just you buy the game and they give you multiplayer and you enjoyed it. It was just built on that economy. But ever since this gas strategy, the economy of the of the game is comes from after you buy the game. That's when the money comes. Before multiplayer games was when you bought the game. That's how it was successful. It wasn't this gas strategy. You bought the game, it's successful. If they release expansion packs, you bought the expansion pack. Successful. Everything was just paid out of cart. But now they need this reoccurring revenue that needs to consistently come in due to this gas strategy. And that's hard. Because when you establish games that did that successfully, the whole point is to keep the gamers there. So how do you pull gamers from Fortnite that they spent thousands of dollars on, on Warzone and all these games? Yo, dude spent two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. They put in 5,000 hours into these games. 2,000 hours. They put in insane amount of hours in these games. They have a community of people that's been playing this for years. They've been playing this for years. They have their little crew that set up everything. Like between their personal time and their money is all in these games. And you think you create some new shit and you're going to pull them? No. They're going to treat you like Becky with the good hair. They're going to enjoy you for a few weeks and then they're going to dip. And you're going to lose majority of the players. And then you're not making enough money. Not enough money is coming in to pay the rent. You're going to get kicked out. Now the question is, so does Sony not try? What I would say is, Sony don't try as hard as what they originally projected. Keep it chill. Just keep it chill. Definitely don't force your first your single player studios into doing something they don't want to do. Don't do that. If they have an idea of doing multiplayer, feel it out. But don't let it jeopardize the single player side. Which was what almost happened to Naughty Dog. Luckily, they were smart enough to say, you know what? We're not going to commit to this stupidity. Sure, we put in a lot of hours. We put in a lot of resources. We put a lot of years into this game. But if we keep going, it's pretty much the Titanic ready to hit an iceberg. Guess what? Naughty Dog decided not to be the Titanic. They veered course early. They said, we're changing it now. Sure, they could get flack. Sure, people could talk shit or people could complain. Got it. Valuable complaints. Valid complaints. I said valuable. Valid complaints. That it held back some first or single player games. It's taking longer for new games to come out. You've been primarily releasing remasters. All valuable, why I keep saying valuable? All valid points. But the end of the day, they did not commit to a bad plan. The plan was bad, period. 
them becoming a live service studio for one goddamn game that you can't even guarantee that Becky with the good hair, because that's factions too, Becky with the good hair was going to pull the husbands away from Call of Duty, away from Destiny, away from all those other uh, multiplayer games. Couldn't guarantee that. Sure, everybody would jump on the factions too, because, you know, we got to create content. We got to get on Twitch and do some live streams. It's the hot, it's the hotness. New Naughty Dog multiplayer. Everybody get on for the first couple of weeks. Like I said, Becky with the good hair doing her thing. Everybody enjoy her. But then when Becky asks, hey, when you're going to leave wifey? Oh, oh, ah, uh. mm. oh, mm. dip. You all would dip. All of yous. And those are the dudes that play multiplayer. Then some of yous, come on, man. Come on, we got to be real. Some of yous on PlayStation hype multiplayer games, but you don't even play multiplayer at all. So you're telling me it's going to take a Sony first party multiplayer to get you to play multiplayer games. Come on, bro. Let's just stop the nonsense, all right? We got the reality here, all right? Okay? This is this is it. This is the numbers. All this other nonsense that everybody's creating, man, wrap that shit up. It's 2024. You know what I'm saying? No more bullshit. Stop this flat earther nonsense, all right? This is the reality. Stop that flat earther nonsense. PlayStation 5, majority of the gamers want to play single player games. And I can tell you personally, and this is my personal reason, okay? The reason why I moved away, and you could look at my PlayStation profile. Look in the early days of the PS3. I used to play a lot of multiplayer. But after a while, it got old. It's the same shit. Like, how many times can I just run for a touchdown? Or how many times I'm going to capture the flag? Or how many times my team's going to have the most kills? It just, it just wasn't a new experience. It's just the same thing with a fresh coat of paint. No variety of whatsoever, and it just got old for me, right? That's number one. Number two, multiplayer games rely on the audience to be successful. So my enjoyment is tied to other people of when they're available to play or just the overall landscape of the game, how many people are playing it. And I was done with that. I was done with other people just being part of the formula to be enjoy game. Single player game, the game itself just has to be good. Good or bad, the value of entertainment for me in playing the game is the game itself, nothing else. I don't care about any other aspect. Is the game good and I'm enjoying it? Boom. And more often than not, I enjoyed much more gaming once I transitioned over out of multiplayer games. I'm not saying you guys are wrong or anything like that. You guys are still in the inner moment. You love the competitive aspects. I just lost that. I just lost the taste for that personally, right? And I think a lot of people on PlayStation, now that we got factual numbers, feel the same way on PlayStation. They want those great single player experiences across from everybody so they can just simply enjoy the game and not deal with eight-year-olds talking about your moms. It's like, some people are just done with just shit. Sometimes you outgrow shit talking on the internet. Like, it's not cute. Like, you know, playing a game and people shit talking, like racism. That shit ain't cute. Like, that shit's just ridiculous, right? And some people are just done with that. Some people are just like, we moved on from that. And as you can see, you know, when you got up to 59% of the hours being played a single player, and for the last four years, on a consistent basis, multiplayer has not been able to top. Single player, that just tells you what the brand is about and what the consumer wants out of the brand. All of it. Majority. And that's what happens when you have 100 plus million consoles sold. Okay? Sure, Call of Duty is the most played game, but it's still only around 20 million PlayStation gamers on the platform playing it. What the hell is the other 80 million doing? 70, you know, 50, 60, 70 million. They're not playing Call of Duty. They're playing something else. Everybody got options. And just because a game didn't sell 30 million doesn't mean some nobody's playing those games. It's just not a not. But even the big first party, Horizon Zero Dawn sold like 24 million. So... 
80 plus million people didn't play Horizon. But the people that didn't play Horizon, they probably played Spider-Man. And some of the people that didn't play Spider-Man, they probably played God of War. It's a mixed bag. It's not the same exact group with every single game. There's a mixed bag. Some people who like Horizon don't like Spider-Man because they don't like comic book games. People who love Spider-Man don't like Horizon because maybe they don't like RGPGs. There's a different taste. And then there's people who play everything and there's people who play some things. But when you look at it holistically out of the entire fan base, there is something for everyone somewhere, somehow. Whether it's a Japanese game, whether it's an RPG, a racing game, whatever. Somewhere on the line, fighting games, sports games, it's interconnected. And then when you look at it in total, single player comes out on top. That's what gamers want. So more often than not, if gamers, if the majority of hours are on single player games, and you're making a single player game, you'll most likely find success on PlayStation. Multiplayer is the challenge because the hours are being collected by the chosen few. And those dudes not leaving. So to say, oh man, PlayStation has 41% of hours, I'm going to make a new multiplayer game. Then you realize what you're trying to do is you're trying to create Becky with the good hair. And her job is trying to pull a husband away from his wife. And that is a challenge for a multiplayer game. Becky better be on her A game. Everything's got to be perfect if you're going to try to pull somebody that spent thousands upon thousands of hours playing these games, collectibles, doing all this stuff where they put time and investment and money, and now they're just going to throw it all away? Good luck with that. Anyway, what do you? let me know what you think about this news, about this article. Is your only friend in these YouTube streets, Portal Rock 77? And hit me up in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And everyone, please hit the like button. I would truly appreciate it. You guys take care. Peace. Grand opening, grand closing.